Hello and uh, welcome to our talk, Graph Clustering for All Parameter Regimes. This is a work done by Jun Haugen, David Glitch, Nate Welt, Anthony Worth, and Xin Zhang. This is Xin presenting for the audience of MFCS 2020 and uh, all the audience watching in the future. Graph clustering is a common task with many applications such as entity resolutions, document, documents classification. A challenge uh, for the practi practitioners of graph clustering is to choose a suitable objective because it is known that different graph clustering objectives may favor different clustering uh, structures. And to further complicate the case, uh, we have a type of objective called parametric objectives where uh, a parametric objective links various other objectives by a tunable parameter, basically uh, solving the objective on one parameter uh, value, use a specific clustering and the summit on another parameter value will yield another uh, clustering. And the practitioners sort of need to know what is the best uh, uh, parameter to tone into in order to obtain the desired clustering uh, feature. And one example of a uh, parametric clustering objective is lambda CC, first proposed by uh, Welt, Glitch, and Wurz. It is a generalization of a common combinatorial clustering problem, correlation clustering. It captures a series of other clustering problems. So basically, uh, for lambda values, which is which lambda is uh, the parameter um, in lambda CC, for lambda values within certain range. Solving, solving lambda CC is equivalent to solve one of those clustering objectives. So the goal here is to solve a graph of clustering objective, lambda prime to be specific, for all the parameters. So lambda prime is a variation of lambda CC. We pick it because it's easier to show uh, results on this objective and it's only a constant factor larger than lambda CC. A constant is uh, independent of lambda. So results achieved for lambda CC can be applied to lambda prime and the result uh, derived from lambda prime can be translated back to lambda CC. Given example of parameter affecting the optimal clustering, we get this uh, toy graph for different uh, lambda values. Uh, we obtained a series of different optimal clusterings. And uh, as you can, Observe over here for lambda one, uh, the optimal clustering partition the graph into uh, two parts, whereas for lambda five, there are five small clusters. And our goal is to sort of to return uh, the series of different clusters to the practitioners so that they can derive some information from this or uh, pick the uh, best clustering objective when they do not know it beforehand. Now uh, we formally define lambda prime objective. The input is a unit weight graph where uh, it's represented by an uh, age list. Uh, we assume an age presented in the list uh, as a positive age, and a positive age indicates two endpoints are similar, and we are encouraged to uh, put the two endpoints uh, into one cluster. Uh, on the other hand, if uh, there's an age absent, that means uh, we consider these two endpoints dissimilar and we're motivated to separate them into different clusters. Conceptually, uh, given an input graph, we can consider the graph as uh, uh, connected by uh, positive and negative ages. So for every pair of nodes, we connect them by a negative age. And uh, ages are equipped with weights, uh, one on positive ages and the lambda on negative ages. And lambda is all parameter, taking value from uh, zero to one. Uh, the formulation of it uh, can be seen as a, a generalization of the correlation clustering. The uh, integer programming problem is defined over a variable x and sij is what we call a cut variable because when sij equal to one, it indicates that we want uh, in the clustering, uh, we want uh, i and j to be separated. And if i, j equals zero, it means we want to put them together into one cluster in the clustering. 
and uh, this triangle inequality uh, guarantees that uh, from uh, assignment of Xig, we can uh, derive a feasible uh, clustering. And uh, the objective um, is simply to uh, count and sum over all the mistakes made by the card variable. For, exa for example, if we put uh, i and g uh, from forming a positive edge into two different clusters, uh, citing sij equal to one, then we will incur a cost of one. On the other hand, if uh, we do not separate a negative edge citing uh, sij equal to zero, then we incur a cost of lambda. Later on, we will encounter the linear is uh, relaxation of this um, formula, in which case lam xig takes value from um, real uh, number zero to one instead of integer uh, zero or one. And uh, over there, uh, we call xig uh, the LP distance because uh, in a way we are uh, uh, mapping uh, the nodes into uh, the metric space and uh, xig indicates distance between two nodes. Lambda prime objective um, can be seen as a function of lambda because for every lambda we can define objective and for the objective we can solve an optimal solution and the optimal solution uh, has a cost uh, and the cost is a, what we call an objective function value and this objective function value uh, is different for a different lambda uh, so then we can show that uh, the lambda prime objective value function is monotonically increasing, concave, and piecewise linear in lambda. Moreover, we do not care when lambda value is too large or too small, because in either case, the optimum solution is simply trivial. For example, uh, if lambda is smaller than threshold lambda s, then the optimal clustering groups all nodes into one cluster. If lambda is greater than uh, lambda L, then the optimal clustering puts every node into a singleton. Therefore, we only care about uh, lambda values in the parameter regime that is in between of lambda S and uh, lambda L. Now the goal is to solve lambda prime for all lambda values. The most straightforward way to approach this is by solving all the LPs for all the lambda values. Although the number of optimal clusterings is bounded by the number of edges in the graph, or number of positive edges in the graph, solving LP is costly in general, and we do not have a polynomial time algorithm. Uh, on the other hand, we uh, cycle with a uh, sort of an approximation approach inspired by uh, the same problem for a single lambda value. Uh, what we do is uh, for a single lambda value uh, and the objective de uh, induced by it, we solve an LP um, relaxation of the LP and then we run the solution into a clustering. Uh, when running the solution, we need to use a running scheme. Previous work has already shown that a, uh, there are a big O of log N approximation factor running schemes for uh, all the lambda values in the lambda. Uh, in the parameter regime. The idea here is to solve uh, LPs for certain lambda values. However, which lambda values to solve is okay here. The challenge is that uh, the number of optimal LP solutions could be exponential. That means we, what we cannot do is to uh, solve all the unique optimal LP solutions for all the lambda values. Uh, the task then is to find a family of optimal solutions that contain a one plus epsilon uh, approximation for all lambda values. And we call it a one plus epsilon approximating family. The task can be demonstrated in the following example. So look at this, this is a uh, toy graph. And uh, for this graph, the uh, lambda prime objective value is shown in the second panel. Now notice each individual linear piece uh, or linear segment represents a unique optimum LP solution and the solution is optimal only in this interval of lambda value. Uh, however, uh, instead of solving uh, every single piece of these linear segments, we can solve only two of them. 
And uh, as shown in uh, the third panel, as we can see, after we draw the linear extension of the three segments, uh, we obtain another curve. And uh, this curve, uh, at least um, this part, the dashed line uh, is above the solid line because uh, we are using the solution optimum not in this range of lambda value to approximate uh, the objective induced by this lambda value. And uh, the ratio between the y value of the dashed line here and the y value of the solid line here is the approximation ratio uh, on this lambda. And we need to find a uh, family of these segments such that those ratios less than or equal to one plus epsilon. Uh, the way to do that is kind of simple. Uh, we have a simple upper bound. Uh, we solve LPs for lambda value equal to lambda s, one plus epsilon times lambda s, and one plus n squared lambda s, all the way to uh, lambda l, sort of a geometric sequence of lambda values. Since uh, lambda s is greater than four over n squared for any graph, and uh, lambda l is uh, less than one, the number of LP solving is bounded by log rhythmic base one plus epsilon n. The intuition here is that uh, for, for a lambda zero and one, uh, and the delta equal to lambda one or, or lambda zero, the optimum solution, uh, lambda zero is the delta approximation to the objective, lambda one. So what we're doing is uh, sort of to translate the ratio of the uh, lambda values uh, to the ratio of uh, the uh, objective values at just another other point. We're not going to go into the details of this, but you can refer back to our paper uh, for more. The question here is, uh, can we do better than this trivial bound? Because remember, this bound always solves a logarithmic amount of uh, LPs, and it always return a family uh, whose size is uh, log n. Well, yes and no. On the one hand, we have a heuristic called Florentier is, uh, expansion algorithm, which we will uh, talk more about later. Uh, that can achieve the same bound on the LP solving, meaning uh, the most of LP solved is also uh, log n, but it can return a smaller approximating family. So the family of LP solutions can potentially be smaller, but this uh, is only true for certain instance because we can show later that actually immediately that there is a log n uh, lower bound on the size of the LP family for ring graphs. To show this lower bound, the key is to connect the task of approximating LP objective to the task of approximating LP, uh, sorry, approximating the square root function with linear segments. We, we first establish a explicit expression for objective value, LP of lambda. And uh, then we uh, show that this LP of lambda is uh, closely connected to uh, the square root function. And uh, then uh, approximating it is as hard as approximating square root function. And approximating square root function is, uh, um, needs at least uh, log A over B linear segments where uh, the approximation taking place uh, on the interval A to B. First, we're going to specifically analyze the optimal MP solution uh, in three steps and then arrive on this explicit form of LP of lambda. Step one, we show that we only need to care about optimal solution where all positive age LP distance are equal. Uh, of course, for any given lambda, the optimal solution does not necessarily need to follow this rule. For example, we may have an optimal solution X1 here. Uh, we assign the positive age is a distance one and zero alternating. Um, we can rotate this solution by sort of uh, sign, uh, relabel the nodes and it will uh, also result in a optimal solution, X2 in this case. And uh, because convex combinations of optimal solutions are also optimal, uh, we can take the average of these two solutions especially the average of each individual distance and arrive on this solution where uh, all the LP, uh, positive edges are assigned a distance one over two. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, this is also optimal and uh, it satisfies the condition. 
So that means we can uh, kind of characterize a optimal solution by a single parameter, at least for the positive edges, uh, say, which is the distance on, the, on one positive edge. Now step two, building upon step one, we're trying to find the optimal distance on positive edges. Now uh, for optimal solution, we know that uh, on positive edges, the distance is always C. And what about the negative edges? Well, there's one of the authors uh, discovered that the optimal LP distance on the negative edges depend uh, on the shortest path specifically. For, for example, for node one uh, and the three, uh, the shortest positive path is from one to two and two to three, which will incur a uh, collective uh, cost of two C. And assigning this negative HB two C uh, is exactly what a optimal solution can do. And this way we have obtained assignment uh, for every age in the graph. Then we can count the total cost incurred by those ages. Uh, we count it by um, accounting each node indiv individually. For example, for node one, we assign uh, the positive edges to node one, uh, for positive edge between one and two to node one, which is C. And then the second group are the uh, cost from one to two, one to three, and one to four. And uh, the third category um, is the shared negative edge cost between one to five. Five is the node that magically opposed to one. It's considered shared because later on when we're counting the cost uh, of the ages incurred on node five, uh, this age will be counted again. That's why it's a half here. Accounting for all the nodes, the total cost of our lambda and C is then written in this formula. It's still a large formula, kind of messy, but uh, it is a big improvement from not knowing what it is and having to solve the LPs. Now, uh, LP of lambda is then naturally equal to the minimal of LP lambda C over all the possible C values. This is uh, still a huge task because we do not know what C value is. And uh, this maxima, uh, the maximal operator is not very friendly uh, either. Uh, next step, uh, we will further simplify this uh, big expression. Now first, we define C star as the C that minimizes LP uh, lambda C for a given lambda. Now since LP lambda C is decreasing, both C is less than two over N, we can focus only on C uh, greater than two over N because remember the goal here is to minimize uh, LP lambda C. Therefore, uh, one minus C I is strictly, uh, is not positive. Uh, and uh, this big term in the uh, expression simply vanishes. Uh, let T equal to one over C float. We will explain why the, we need this uh, particular operation later. Uh, for C within the range one over T plus one to one over T, we can simplify LP lambda C into this form. Now this range is special because it contains all the C values such that one over C floor is exactly equal to T. Then we do a little bit of a case study. Suppose if uh, one over C star is not an integer, then we can select CL and CR that are different to C star such that, su such that uh, CL and the CR uh, will cause some contradictions. Um, now remember, because one over C star is not an integer, C star will be strictly less than one over T because T is an integer. Uh, therefore, uh, we can find a CR that sits in between of C star and one over T, and uh, we can find a CL in between of one over T plus one and C star. Now, if uh, this uh, expression is negative, which means uh, C, the coefficient on C uh, is negative, then LP lambda C is decreasing, and the CR ends up being a better C than C star uh, in terms of minimizing LP. On the other hand, if uh, the coefficient is positive, then it is increasing, and CL ends up to be the better uh, C than C star. In either case, it contradicts to the definition of C star, which means LP lambda C must be a constant for all the C within this range, uh, one over, excuse me, one over uh, T plus one and one over T. Uh, because of this, uh, we can, uh, when we are looking for the best uh, C, which is C star, 
uh, we don't need to go through all the possible states. We only need to go through one particular state value in this interval. And in this case, we pick this value one over t because it is strictly integer. This is why after replacing state with t, the uh, explicit formula going through all the possible t values. And uh, that concludes uh, our proof for the ILP uh, formulation. The final step is to make a square root sandwich. Um, let Q lambda be this form. And for all lambda uh, in this range, we can show that the LP is sandwiched by uh, these two functions. And then there's a the final step, which is to show that if this condition holds, then using, the, using linear PC to approximating LP requires at least the same amount of linear pieces of approximating Q lambda which is uh, at least log A over B. Now plug in the A value and the B value, we got a uh, log N uh, lower bound. And this is uh, exactly a match to the upper bound within a constant factor. Finally, as promised, so we introduced the frontier expansion algorithm. Um, it's a heuristic to calculate the one plus epsilon approximating family. First, we introduced the concept approximate cover range of an LP solution, uh, say. So the cover range is the lambda interval where the solution is an one plus epsilon approximation to the objective. The strategy of the algorithm is simple. We start with uh, the first uh, lambda value we care about, uh, calculating C1. And uh, from C1, uh, we uh, calculate the uh, right end of the approximate cover range. Um, and uh, because for the lambda value beyond this end, we cannot approximate it in the family. So we uh, calculate another LP and that yields solution uh, C2. And then we calculated the uh, cover range of C2 and knowing which part uh, from at which point C2 stops being a, a sufficient approximation and we calculate C3 on, uh, until finally uh, cover the whole lambda range. Uh, the way to calculate the ACR is by using an LP derived by the framework uh, by Nozogin and uh, Jigelka. Now we can actually do a little bit better than this by eliminating some redundancy uh, in this in, in the uh, in the in the family. Uh, for example, over here we can say C2's cover range is entirely contained by the union of that of C1 and C3. So we can safely remove C2. Now after we remove uh, all of the redundant segments, uh, where a trick we call backward elimination. The LP algorithm probably uses at most twice as many segments as the optimum one plus epsilon approximating family. Now, to summarize, um, our contribution in this work is uh, uh, we find a family of clusterings that contains for every parameter value uh, approximate solution to the objective. Uh, we obtain a family of clusterings of size log, big O of log n by solving big O of log n LPs. The side of the family is asymptotically tight for ring graphs. In the future, uh, we would like to better understand the upper and the lower bound on the sides of the family for other special classes of graphs and solving um, probably less than logarithmic number of piece because remember our LP algorithm, although returns potentially a, a smaller one plus epsilon approximate family, it still requires to solve uh, our log number of LPs at the worst case. More of the details of this work can be found uh, in our archive version. If you go to this link or go to our document uh, in the uh, proceedings. Thank you all for tuning in. This is my presentation.